my testimony. My story starts when I was six years old, and I almost drowned in a swimming pool at a hotel. My parents and I were going there. I don't really remember most of the details anymore, um, other than my older brother was in the deep end of the pool jumping off the diving board, and I was in the shallow end. And I guess I decided I wanted to go out and be where he was, so I shimmied along the side of the pool until... Uh, at some point, when I was on the deep side, I lost my grip, and I fell in the water, and I sank down to the bottom, and I remember nearly, I remember giving up. I remember thinking that I'm going to die at six years old, and I passed out, and uh, the next thing I remember was waking up in the hospital, and I don't really remember very much about that, to be honest. But that's an important part of my testimony, because... Um, after that, I had a powerful fear of death that uh, stayed with me for a very long time. I had night terrors, and I uh, would wake up screaming and crying, bad dreams. Um, got to the point where I could recognize the dream, but I couldn't stop it for a while. And uh, I would sometimes have waking moments of panic where I would be overwhelmed with a sense of fear and death. And that stayed with me into my adulthood. Uh, what I also had growing up was um, this deep spiritual longing and curiosity. Uh, since my parents were in their non-Christian phase while I was growing up, uh, church wasn't there for me. But I, I read a lot. I became a student of uh, Joseph Campbell and read several of his books and uh, studied other religions, usually not Christianity, because, again, my parents were uh, alienated from their childhood and their growing up faith at that time. Um, and as a child, I'd had a bad evangelism experience, someone getting in my face in my front lawn uh, with hellfire and, you know, where would you go tonight, If you, where would you go if you died today kind of thing. But I had this longing and this sense that there's more uh, than this life, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out, couldn't put my finger on it. Then when I was in college, I started dating this girl uh, who attended this church in town, and uh, she invited me to go there. And at first I couldn't sing the songs, and I didn't, uh, um, wasn't comfortable ever in worship. Eventually we got married there in that church, and uh, we... Uh, continued to go, and I would get slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly a little more involved. We had two children who were both baptized there, and um, I didn't participate in the baptisms because I wasn't a Christian. Uh, but I found myself being drawn more into the community. And finally, uh, at one point, uh, I like to say I was the only person in United Methodist history converted by the administrative board of a church because they invited me to join the ad board because we'd been there a long time. And so I told them my story, and I, and I asked them this question. I said, uh, don't I have to be a member of the church before I can be on the ad board? And they said, you're not. I said, well, don't I have to be baptized before I can be a member of the administrative board? And they said, you're not. You've been going here so long, we just assumed that you were. And so that started a conversation, and uh, the pastor and I prayed together, talked together. And uh, in November 2001, uh, I was baptized as an adult. The biggest hurdle for me in that was getting over the sense that you had to have everything worked out and be perfect. Uh, before you could be baptized, particularly as an adult. And the pastor helped me, and uh, Christ helped me. And I still remember the kneeling there and feeling the water. And on that day, and ever since, those night terrors and those fears of death were taken away. And so for me, that's the deepest confirmation that it wasn't just an empty ritual that I was going through, but there was a grace poured out on me, and Christ took away my fear and gave me life. Praise the Lord for that. Amen.